the day begins by waking mother out of bed and getting her her breakfast, which usually includes uh, oatmeal or scrambled eggs and some orange juice, usually only again about a quarter of a cup at a time, and then uh, her liquid feeding to fill up her stomach. Part of our regular routine after breakfast is to change my mom's diaper. I had no training how to do this before the first time I had to change my mother's diaper. I just had to wing it, figure out how to best move her, because at the time that I first learned how to do it, she really couldn't move herself. It's not like it is now where she's able to actually assist in rolling herself over and getting herself in position. And that's a benefit, too, because it shows how much progress she's made. Now, normally, I use a cloth diaper. I had to make the cloth diapers. Fortunately, I have that skill. But in this video, we're using some disposable diapers that a friend of the family had provided to us, a big box of them. And while I prefer the cloth diapers because, one, they're environmentally friendly, two, they're less expensive, there is an advantage to using the disposable diapers in that my mother feels a necessary level of discomfort when the diaper is soiled so she can let me know that she needs to be changed. Her cloth diapers are in fact so comfortable that she could, if she did not think about it, sit in them all day long and I wouldn't know she needed to be changed. Fortunately, of course, there's a routine to these things and I change her anyways. Now, part of the routine that I employ also is to add a second glove to my right hand when I'm changing her. Now, obviously I'm using these examination gloves because this is a sanitary process, but it's also um, meant to protect her from anything that I might have come in contact with prior to changing her. And honestly, doing it this way also improves efficiency. Here's why. I just put some rash relief cream onto that glove and I apply it in the way that I was the only piece of advice that I was given by a nurse to apply it like I was frosting a cake. Please try to envision that instead of what I'm really doing. And when I've finished applying it, I simply remove one that one glove, throw it away, and I'm still able to proceed without having to try to put on a glove over a sweaty hand. Now the process of changing the diaper wasn't as traumatic for me as I thought it was going to be. I know that it's embarrassing for her, but she was getting used to it from the hospital time. I'd never changed her a diaper before, period, much less my own mother's. So one would think that I would have all these Freudian problems, but Surprisingly to me, I approached it from a business-like attitude that this is something that has to be done. It's for her benefit. It's for my benefit. And the best way to do it is to get it done without all the drama. All right. Get your foot over. You've got to do it. I can't do it for you. You'll never get better at it if I do it for you. Okay, good. Now I can help you there. Sit up, both feet on the floor, very good. I'll bring this up against you. All the way up. There you are. I get to comb your hair when I get back out. All right, and up you go. Down you go. That was about the easiest one I've ever had with you. <laughs> By the easiest one, I mean the easiest diaper change and transfer. Once I transfer her to the chair, which she actually did most of herself, you notice that I only guided her, I take her out to the living room, and uh, she can watch TV until it's time for us to do her physical therapy exercises. Well, as you might imagine, <coughs> One of the things that uh, being a caregiver involves is laundry.
lots of laundry, actually. Um, every night after I put my mother to bed, I do the laundry from the day and hang it up. And every morning, I do the laundry from her overnight clothes, and then I hang that up during the daytime. What that does is it sets up a rotation to, uh, so that at, some, at just about all points during the day, over, a, over the course of at least two days, we have dry clothes and dry items. Now, for instance, this is one of the cloth diapers that I had to make for my mother. I made cloth diapers not because of uh, a lack of um, disposable diapers available, but because it was really first very expensive to buy a whole bunch of uh, disposable diapers every month. And for the price of one month's worth of disposable diapers, I was able to build. Uh, I was able to construct enough um, cloth washable cloth diapers. These are just two. This one I just hung up, so it's still damp. This one's dry, so I'm going to be taking it in soon to take care of my mother. In addition, I have all of these things: towels, shirts, washcloths. After I finished hanging up the laundry, and uh, putting my mother through the exercises that were left to us by my mother's physical, occupational, and speech therapists, it's time for lunch. And lunch is a far simpler affair than breakfast. She doesn't like to eat solid food at lunch, probably because of any discomfort she feels when she's eating it in the morning due to the needle sticking into her stomach through the tube that I'm pouring her lunch into. But... At the very least, I have an opportunity to just sit down, take a few minutes to watch TV with my mother, talk to her about things. She can't speak back, but I, she understands what I say, and she can communicate with gestures and other forms of nonverbal communication. And then at the end of the feeding, I finish up with water. This not only rinses out her tube and hydrates her, but it also allows for other bodily functions to happen more, shall we say, smoothly. And I will leave it up to your imagination to decide what those functions are. The water is prescribed at 200 milliliters. I usually give her about half that much more. <coughs> you know, there are times in going in, my, in the daily care of my mother where I simply have to go to the store. And since our, both of our cars broke down over a year ago, going to the store means literally hiking 1.7 miles from where we live to either Walmart or Vons up here on the west side. We're going underneath the freeway right now. Or 1.5 miles to Stater Brothers on the, uh, on the lake side. And so as you see, I have a big full-frame backpack on. I'm wearing a, a, a wicking compression shirt. I have my walking stick, cold water. Now today I have to get a lot of things. That's why I'm wearing my full-frame backpack. It has two, uh, two extra uh, compression bags. But usually when I'm going, I just have to get one or two things, and then I can wear a uh, lighter weight day pack that has a, a camelback bladder in it for water, for hydration. And I like that. Sadly, on this road, there's not a whole lot of room to walk. That's not much of a shoulder, and in a moment, you'll see it gets even smaller. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because that's where the shoulder was. Granted, it's not much of a shoulder. But it's better than having to ne negotiate a six inch swath between the road and that uh, guardrail. You can see some of the reason why I have to 
bring this walking stick with me. I mean, uh, nice drop-offs like that and lots of brush where snakes can hide. And it is rattlesnake season. Although this side of the road is wider, it's not necessarily safer. The cars whizzing by me sometimes leave me little more than two feet to three feet. Fortunately, that one that just passed by there was kind enough to move all the way to the center and put themselves in danger rather than myself. But up here, you see one of the other hazards that I have to deal with. This is a drainage ditch that leads into a, cu a culvert. It's filled with rocks, lots of places for scorpions and snakes to hide. And it takes water and sand runoff from those hills and directs it towards the system that runs under the freeway. Now this one's uh, opening there is shallow compared to the others and fairly wide, safer to cross, but if there was ever a place where I'm going to meet a snake, it's going to be right here. Just past those apartments right over there is uh, my destination. Now I've crested the top of the hill. On a nice smooth sidewalk now that we're in a developed area. This is a nice part of my walk. It's also the part of the walk where people see me for the first time and they think that I'm walking for my health because I'm carrying a stick and a backpack while walking on a sidewalk. I don't quite understand that I had another mile and a half before this of nice rough country. After a long day of exercises, television watching, changing diapers back and forth, my mother is exhausted. Yes, her stamina has been reduced severely after the stroke. So at 10 p.m. every night, which was, by the way, the normal time she went to bed before the stroke, I take her out of her living room chair and put her in a wheelchair and uh, scoot her into the bedroom. Taking her to bed at exactly the same time that she did before the stroke also maintains normality, a continuance of normality in her life so that she doesn't feel so out of sync with the rest of the world, which is a common problem after strokes. Fortunately, as I mentioned earlier, she's able to help a lot now with moving herself from the chair to the bed and back. All I have to do, as you see here, is lower the bed to a level that's easy for her to transfer out of the chair and not have to stand up to get into the bed. At this moment, which was also filmed on a different day, by the way, uh, she is doing all the standing and all the movement with her legs. I'm just guiding her, making sure she doesn't fall over. And yes, she was wearing one of the cloth diapers I made. Those, that's her royal purple cloth diaper made with microfiber fleece and lined with velour because that's the only fabric I had on hand at the time. Once I get her laying down, as in this case you see, and get her feet up on the bed, she utters a sigh of immense relief and almost immediately starts falling asleep. So I have to work quickly to adjust her position in the bed so that when I lift the head and the foot up with the motor it doesn't pinch her. But I have to still raise and lower the bed itself using a hand crank which sometimes makes me feel like a mad scientist. But once this is done she gets fed and goes to sleep. 